So we are uh, uh, live here from the uh, Maryland Holiday Inn in Timonium, Maryland, uh, a rest stop, essentially, a truck stop where they have, uh, it's like a, a woman described it to me. She goes, it's like a, uh, a rest stop that they built a town around. That's kind of the vibe here. I'm uh, playing at Magoobie's Comedy Club all weekend and staying in the Holiday Inn. Uh, and I figured I would re release this uh, episode. We were going to re-release an old episode um, and then just stuff ads in that and, uh, you know, something you people haven't heard. And uh, But one of the reasons I'm not more successful is I don't have utter contempt for my fan base. I'm trying to acquire that. That is such an ingredient to success. You look at the people that are really successful – and they, they, they walk off stage and you can tell they're disgusted by the people that they just had to entertain. And I, I don't really feel that way. So I try to like do the right thing by you people, which will lead me down a road to poverty because you like, it just doesn't, it's, you, I need to just literally bash you over the head every chance I get, rob you, you know, if I was a tow truck guy, I would shoot your tires out and then, you know, drive by, pretend I didn't see you, be like, oh, do you have a problem here? That's what successful people do. So I'm, I'm learning how to do that. I'm trying to do that. But uh, I'm staying in the beautiful Holiday Inn, which is what, what you think it is. You know, towels that when you use them to wash your face, take a layer of skin off your face. Uh, you know, so industrial soap. Like, if you've ever felt like what I would imagine prison soap feels like, I've never been to prison. I've never really been to jail uh, because I'm white. I should have gone many, many times, but I have not. But I imagine that prison soap has a feel like the Holiday Inn soap where it smells like soap. Like, they've done nothing to disguise the smell of soap. Like, it's not, there's no lavender. There's nothing in it. That makes you feel it's soap. It's straight up old school hand soap that you would use after painting class in kindergarten in the 90s when they didn't know any better. And they were just like, yeah, wash your hands with this. We also wash the floor with it. That's what holiday inns are using to so you can wash yourself. Just industrial strength, ammonia laden soap. And it's nice. And then you look around Baltimore. You're like, should I get out of here? Should I spend my, more money on a hotel? And why? Why? To get shot in a better area of town? To get shot walking to a nicer hotel? It doesn't matter. The area has a lot of problems. You know? I'm not even in Baltimore. I'm 20 minutes out, 25 minutes out in Timonium, which sounds like ammonia. Like it, The name of the place sounds like a chemical that they found, like a toxic chemical that they found a company dumping in a river. That's what it sounds like. It's like, oh, yeah, well, the babies were born with uh, real, real issues because they were dumping timonium in that river for so long and nobody knew. That's what it feels like. And then you look at the people and you're like, yeah, that may be what it is because it's got a real interesting feel here. What did you say, Josh? Josh is... A local comic, he's uh, he's helping me record this podcast. What did you say another comic said about these people? We won't say who the comic is, but... Oh, oh, oh. he said, uh, he's like, I feel like I'm performing for people that work at Home Depot. And I was like, no, no, you're performing for people that aspire to work at Home Depot. Yeah, it's a... This is... They yeah. would love to have that orange apron and be like, yeah, yeah I did it. I it's, did it. It's a, it's a rough road yeah. out here. <laughs> it just seems to be... Yeah. You know, because they're they're kind of well outside the realm of that defense industrial complex money. Oh, yeah. yeah, they want that that you know when I performed at the Bethesda Maryland Country Club for you know people that were literally dripping in blood, uh, it was a very different vibe. You know, when you drove through Bethesda Maryland, you're driving, you're looking at these beautiful English Tudor style homes, these brick castles, mm -hmm. stone castles set back far from the road really nice and then and you're like oh this is all built with blood money all of it you know but this area you're like man this could use some blood money this could really use something like these people were disappointed when they they couldn't go to iran i think half of these people were excited as fuck about the draft 
They were like, I'm psyched. I get to go to Tehran and maybe get killed. Fuck yeah. I hear Tehran's pretty nice. Yeah, they were so happy. And then we averted war and they were so upset. And they're just sitting there like, fuck. I was so close. So many of my friends, nobody really wants to admit this. We need, we need like six wars right now. <laughs> With the amount of people we have selling CBD oil, we need war. A lot of war. And I mean, this is unpopular to say. People won't like this. Mm -hmm. I'm against war as like in, in the sense that I'm principled and I don't want people to die. However, however, let's look at the <laughs> numbers. We got to get rid of it. A few of my friends need to go to the desert and get shot. That's the way it is. And that's an uncomfortable thing to say, especially to them. And I've said this to them <laughs> when they've asked me for advice. I'm like, the reality is you need to get shot in the desert because with so many people that I know, the best version of them is a flag on a mantle. Like they're just dead and they can inspire future generations of people. Yeah. I remember going over to my grandfather's house. They just point to a flag on the mantle and go, Uncle Gerard gave it all. And as a little kid, you just kind of remember that. It, it makes an impact on you. It's so, I mean, now we're going to be like, Uncle Gerard sells CBD. <laughs> it's much better that he's a hero. Yeah. Who knows what he did there? Probably committed rampant sexual assault and then fucking got killed in friendly fire. But it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that he killed himself or he, his friend shot him in the night because he, who knows? You it, you it's still, just, yeah, you still get a flag. You, you, you still <laughs> inspire generations of people that are, and that's the thing that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to admit that we, we need a war. We need a war or we need to shave some numbers off. We've got too many people wandering around that really have no clue as to what they're going to do. And there's people listening to this show right now that say, I'm one of those people. And the reality is I'm saying to you very nicely and very reasonably, the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do for your friends and your family mm -hmm. is go get killed in Iraq or Afghanistan or Iran. <laughs> don't go, by the way, don't go and then come back with PTSD and get a pit bull and be homeless and set up a tent and yep. then I'm supposed to contribute to you. <laughs> I don't want that either. Be we're not mobile. looking, we're not yeah. looking for that. Yeah. What we're looking for is you got to go and you got to not come back. That's the reality. A lot of my friends, you well, have to go and not come back. Well, you come back as a flag. That's what you That's do. what you come back as. Yeah. You come back as a flag. You come back as somebody uh, that's, uh, you know, or, or you just come back and you're happy and it's fine. I'm not trying to deal with people that are like scarred. My friend was a Marine. He went there. Yeah. He probably killed a bunch of people and he's really a nice guy. He's fine. And he's a cool dude, and he's a, I'm I'm not into the flashbacks and the like dark persona, and I'm not saying it's not needed, but just it is what it is. You know what we're doing over there. There's nobody that should join the military now and shocked about what it really is. You know what it really <laughs> is. It's you know you're not handing out candy to the townspeople. It is what it is. You're putting a gun in a toddler's face and saying, "Where's daddy?" You know what it is. And if you're gonna do that, you, no hate from me. But just don't come back all shocked at, with PTSD because it wasn't what you thought. You thought you were going to be helping people in Iraq find their lost dogs. I'm I'm just picturing you as a recruiter, like an yeah. army recruiter in a high school, just yelling at 17-year-olds. I'd recruit a lot more people because I'd be honest. I'd be like, who wants to shoot up this school? Do you want to shoot? Form a line. How Let's about go. we just put you, keep that thought, hold that thought. <laughs> Get on a plane. You know gonna, where else there's schools? We're going to put you on a plane, and we're just going to have you shoot up other schools. There's bullies there, too. Yeah. They won't like you either. See, I like that. You're taking their talents and then guiding it somewhere else. Yeah, I yeah. mean, listen, at the end of the day, I know that there's a lot of heroic people in the military that are great people that are doing something that I do not have the balls to do, and that's great. But then there's also a lot of my personal friends that need to get killed and are living in safe areas and they're never going to be killed. 
And because they live in the suburbs, they're never going to be caught in the crossfire of a bad drug deal Mm -hmm. for the most part, at least not for a few years till things really start heating up out there. (laughs) But for right now, it's just bacon, egg and cheeses and, and, and nothing. So what they need is to be heroes. All of my friends need to be heroes. That's Mm -hmm. all. And who's to say what a hero is? I mean, you know, one guy's hero is another person's. You literally shot my baby. So I don't, I'm not saying what it is. I just know that if you're joining the military now, you, you, they understand what it is. Right. And a lot of it is good. Listen, we've done a lot of great things with the military. We've done a lot of not so great things. I don't know which one of them you're going to do. And neither do you. That's the fun of it. You don't really know which, which end you're going to be on. You could get there and go, well, yeah, this doesn't seem great, but you're in now and it is what it is. You know? I thought comedy was going to be different. It ain't. It's not. Uh, but, you know, I, it's not like PTSD where I'm like being like, fuck, I thought it was going to be, you know, I'm, sh- you know, yeah. I'm not going to hang myself. I'm not going to, you know, yet. And if I do, I'll do it quietly, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I do think we should provide better mental health care for the soldiers that come back. But I also think a way to avoid some of it is to be very honest about kind of what it might be. Mm. Like we might be like, you might be helping people and killing terrorists. You also might be the terrorist. We don't know yet. (laughs) We don't know which mission you're going to be on. We don't, that we kind of, don't know. Kind of makes it fun. It's yeah. Like a choose your own adventure. It's what makes it fun. <laughs> so just understand. But the the larger point here yeah. is that that so many people in this country need to be heroes, and they we need to give them a way for them to be heroes. And if they continue along their path of not getting shot in a foreign country, it will help no one. So that's just my point. So I'm telling all of my friends, maybe it's time to enlist. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But at the end of the day, it's something to think. Hey, it's something to think about. You know, if you if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro Light in its mouth and watch that and then press play on your phone. <laughs>